Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, richarddwyer.com. Let me do everything wrong here, right? They tell you that when you're fortunate enough to um, have some subscribers here on YouTube, right, that you shouldn't try to offend your audience, that you shouldn't be controversial, right? When you watch TV, you'll notice that media outlets are trying to cultivate followers, right? As Michael Jordan once said, when asked why he didn't support a Democratic candidate, he said, oh, because Republicans buy sneakers too, right? People try to, you know, ingratiate themselves to their subscribers. Well, let me say, let's take the opposite approach, right? I know my crowd here online is multicultural. I know it's multiracial. I know it's diverse. I believe in my subscribers enough to also believe that we can discuss edgy topics. And what I love about YouTube, really it's why I continue to make videos, is because of the comments left by subscribers, right? I learn a lot. It's a discussion. Let's tackle a very current and very big issue. The entire issue of Rachel Dozier's racial identity. Right now, this is a white woman who was recently outed by her parents as being a white woman. Right, even though she was the NAACP leader in Spokane, Washington, and even though she herself self-identifies as black and, in fact, tans her skin and wears a frizzy hairstyle to make herself look black. Right now, she, of course, resigned. Let me just lead with my view. I feel her resignation is unfortunate. I don't believe there should be a race-based test or criteria to be leader of the NAACP. Understand the organization itself was founded by a multiracial and multigender group. Right? The NAACP itself has said in a public statement that it's not concerned with whether, you know, a leader in its leadership is white or black. It has no racial test. Let me also say, too, and we'll call her Rachel D. simply because I have a hard time pronouncing her last name. Right? Um, understand that Rachel D. was wholeheartedly supporting causes relevant to the advancement of people of color, right? There's no allegation that she wasn't sincere. Dare I say that she wasn't authentic in her commitment to advance people of color, to address issues that impact people of color. Right? In my opinion, spiritually, that's exactly the kind of person that African Americans would want. Right? In positions advocating on behalf of people of color. Right? Someone who truly is driven to advance people of color. Right? Understand, too, I said that she tans her skin. Context is everything, isn't it? Right? To the people out there who believe that this is blackface, you've got to be kidding me. Right? Blackface is something that, historically, some have used. The people behind Amos and Andy, for example, to denigrate black people, to mock black people. Here you have a woman who loved people of color, 
I should say loves people of color and who wants to identify with them. This is the opposite of blackface. There's no mockery intended here. This is just someone who is spiritually fulfilling their own wants and needs, right? She's not tanning her skin to mock anyone. She's just trying to fit in with the group that she identifies with, right? So I'm not offended, not in the slightest, by the fact that she tans her skin and wears her hair in a way where it looks frizzy. I'm not upset with that in the slightest. Look at her own history, too. She was married to a black man. Right? She, you know, her interest in the plight of people of color is a deeply personal one. I don't know whether she has biracial kids, multiracial kids, or not. But whether she does or not, understand that she herself was in a multiracial family. She has a vested interest in the plight of people of color. So, let me say, I'm someone who really doesn't have a problem with her identifying herself as black. Understand, when people walk into a room and see her today, they're going to think she's black. Right? Understand, you know, black people get discriminated against just off the visual. I know she looks light-skinned, but a lot of people off the visual are going to have a suspicion that she's black before she opens her mouth, before she even, you know, shows her personality because unfortunately that's the way a lot of racial discrimination works right she has placed herself in the category of someone who would be discriminated against based on how she looks right now let's talk about the other side of the coin because I do believe that's deeply relevant let me say this I support Rachel 100%, right? I believe that she identifies herself as black, visually is black, has altruistic reasons and motives, right? I don't believe she is making herself culturally black simply for some kind of financial gain. I don't. But let me say this, and I say it in the strongest words possible, right? While she identifies herself as black, right? And why, you know, while I support her, she's black today, right? The bottom line is, in my book, she's not black right because number one being black is not a choice right the minority experience is one where you're just born into the kind of racial discrimination that dark-skinned people like me face you know Black people don't have the choice to just decide, you know what, I'm just going to be Latino today. I'm just going to be Asian today. I'm just going to be white today. That's not the way it works, right? While racial might sympathize with black people, while she herself first started viewing herself as black at the age of five, right, which is what she said in interviews, right, just understand to get to the age of five, many black kids during their developmental years 
right? Look up child psychology. Look at the impact that kids, you know, go through um, in dealing with their environment just from one to five, right? I'm telling you, a lot of young black kids who don't have the choice to decide that they're anything other than black kids, right? And I'm aware that that line's going to generate some comments here. A lot of black kids by the age of five understand that they're different or at least they're treated differently than whites than folks from other races right that their experience is singular understand too that a lot of your upbringing is dictated by the older people in your family their experiences right when you're raised in a house where your parents have suffered racial discrimination where your lineage has abominations in it like slavery not from you know Roman times not from the Middle Ages but from the 1800s right recent slavery when your history has political disenfranchisement, right? Where your ancestors couldn't vote, right? Poll taxes, other legal shenanigans to keep them from voting, right? Understand that that experience is outside of the experience that Rachel D. has had. Right? Understand too, because of that history of slavery and political and economic disenfranchisement, right? Understand it's in the 50s that you have Rosa Parks, where you have a public bus system that wouldn't allow black people who didn't have a choice, by the way, when they're hopping on the bus to suddenly decide, you know what, I'm going to be white and I'm going to sit in the front of the bus. Right. Understand back then, if you had dark skin, if you had my skin, you were in the back of the bus and you didn't have a choice about it. Right. Understand, folks, that's the 50s. Right. Many of the people in your family, or at least some of them, the older people, remember that. Understand if you're a kid in that environment hearing from these older people your version of reality might be foundationally different than Rachel D's right and understand their consequences you have a lot more broken homes in the black community right you have a lot less historically economic opportunity you have fewer people, while we have role models, you don't have the kind of role models, you know, Fortune 500 CEOs and stuff like that, that you have in communities that didn't face the political and the economic barriers. Right? Rachel D. came from a two-parent household. Right? No doubt her history is very different than the history I've just described right for her hearing about the Mus the Montgomery bus boycotts might lead her to darken her skin frizzy her hair so she can feel what the people in the back of the bus are feeling but understand that's a choice for her that's the hard reality for the people sitting in the back of the bus. Right? So understand, I know there are a lot of people out there who were raised in black neighborhoods, who have predominantly black friends, right? Who love black culture, 
right? You know, I applaud all of that. I believe the black community, personally, should have your back, right? I hope there's an outcry here, and I hope Rachel D feels that she always has the red carpet to come back to the NAACP, right? I have a lot of empathy for her. I have a lot of admiration for her. This is a very brave person. No question about it. But at the same time, just like I can't suddenly decide, hey, you know what? Let me have surgery. Let me change my look. Let me be white and then understand what the white experience is, not having had a white childhood. Right? Not having had situations where you know, I haven't dealt with the kind of Jim Crow laws and Jim Crow culture that's endemic in the treatment of blacks in the United States historically. Right? The point is, folks can think about loving another race's culture. And quite frankly, I think at the end of the day, Race is a social construct. But understand, Rachel D. didn't have the black experience growing up. Right? When she was three or four, there's no one who would treat her like she belongs on the back of the bus because of the color of her skin in some contexts. Right? When she was reading the history books growing up, people who looked like her right weren't forced to the back of the bus right there isn't the feeling that because of her skin color you know it would be highly unlikely in fact unprecedented until recently that she would be a senator or president of the United States right by the way I understand there's a gender issue here and I believe that's going to change soon, right? I believe a woman will be president of the United States shortly, right? If not Hillary, then someone else. But let me say this. She's not black. I know I'm sounding contradictory. She's black today, but I don't consider her to be someone who was raised black. It's a different experience than the experience she's had. Right? Understand, even, you know, wealthy black people, Bill Cosby's kid and stuff like that, have gone through different experiences. Right? Both in terms of their treatment by society and their own self-identity. Right? Just reading history books and seeing your ancestors brought over on ships, that's a different experience than the one she's had. To sum up, I want all of us to support her because I believe this woman is authentic in identifying herself as black, her self-identity. Right? Where I believe there's a ceiling on her blackness, so to speak, is simply, and I'm not trying to be race police here, but it's simply that she wasn't born into a black family. She wasn't raised where when she was a little kid, she had dark skin and people looked at her and treated her differently because of that. Right? When she opened up textbooks, right, the people who were slaves historically weren't her immediate ancestors. Right? It's a different journey for people of color. Right? You know, 
as I've said, when I read about the Montgomery bus boycotts, right, I could just imagine how I would have been treated in Montgomery back in the 1950s, right? It's not a matter of choice. It's just the hard reality. When I talk with older black men, especially older black men from the South, you can see the pain. You can feel the pain. Because I know if I were older and if I were there, I know I'd be treated just like they were treated. I can't tan my skin, frizzy my hair, and then have the same level of shared history. Right? Have the same level of identification. That's how I see it. Let me make one more point, too. I really believe that, and I know this will be unfair, but people of color need to be more inclusive than, let's say, white culture. Because we know what it's like to have been excluded. Right? And so here, I really do hope that organizations like the NAACP embrace people like Rachel Dozio. Right? I do. You know, and I believe that for her, because of her identity, she feels that being black is who she is. Right? I believe for her, personally, being black is not a choice. Right? In her mind. Right? My point to you, though, is even with all of that, that's different than being born black and not having the choice, right? Not ever having the choice. Knowing that you can't change your hairstyle and then be a different race. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online and let's be adult, right? I understand that there's always that fringe, foolish crowd, I'll call it, where I'll make a video and then someone will use the N-word in commenting and stuff like that. Don't have those fools throw you off your game in leaving your comments. Right? Leave your comments and let's be a done. Let's understand that we have different visions of what race is. I know many people are going to be offended when I say, you know what, she can authentically believe that she's black and be committed to black causes but still not be, in a sense, as black as someone who was born black, was raised with black relatives, who had ancestors, who, you know, were slaves, who's dealing with, you know, broken homes, people who had shattered dreams, right, and was raised in that environment, right, was five, and by the time they were five, understood that, hey, you know, I'm different than many of my classmates if I'm in a multiracial environment, right? That's very different, in my opinion, than what Rachel D. has experienced. While I embrace her, right, I don't, in, I don't view her as having the same background as someone who's gone through that background. Right? Just looking at her parents in interviews, and let me say, shame on the parents for negatively impacting her life this way by outing her. Right, She should have an expectation of privacy, not being betrayed by parents. I understand there are family issues. Okay, fair enough. Parents were talking to reporters. Right? But let me say this, just looking at her parents. Right? You know, <laughs> nuclear family... Looks like the parents are living in, um, you know, some place that, you know, isn't quite the hood, right? You understand her background's a bit different than the background, I would say, of many of the constituents who, of course, look to the NAACP 
for leadership. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.